Happy Sunday. That's our new day when we release oh. our eclipses on Sunday. Yes. <laughs> the weekend. So I wanted to ask a question, Betty. <clears throat> As in a healthy, grounded, sexual adult, what types of experiences should we all have? Well, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I know that that's going to scare a lot of people, but, you know, we can do safe sex. We know what that is. And empowered sex. Sex in situations where we're not in some dark corner alone with one other person where we could be victimized. It's how you learn so much about yourself. And we've both done that. We both had the same yeah. kind of trajectory. Yeah. So let's start with masturbation. Well... Uh, I started, you know, from day one. And hours. I think when you can commit an hour or two or three. Now, when I, I, it's a whole production. I have to get out all of my toys and spread the towels on the bed and get my little bottle of oil and my favorite two dildos I was used to. Oh. Or your accoutrement. But I think not stopping at one orgasm when you keep Never. going and you use mirrors and fantasy and you go for hours with yourself, I think it changes you as a person sexually. Yeah, to, not to frighten people off, just say when you go for an hour. That, it starts. Okay, an hour, we'll start with an hour. Start with an hour. And if you can be with yourself, interested and engaged and building sexual tension for an hour, you're on your way. And you learn a ton. Yeah, okay. Uh, but I think you should also have sex outside of the whole beauty you thing. Like, have sex with someone you don't find attractive. Oh, I did that. Right? Oh, yes. <laughs> you know, you were like, can I do it? Like, challenge yourself. And, and it was somebody who was really, I mean, when I was younger, somebody who was really old. Like, yeah, yeah, in I their like, 70s. Like, like, what my, <laughs> like how old I am now. <laughs> I remember doing that, and you know what? It was, sex was almost kind of the same. There were subtle differences. But it's amazing how when you let go of it has to be my type and beautiful oh, and young. That was the first thing I learned at my first sex party. <clears throat> it, it's all of a sudden everyone was paired off, Ex except me. <laughs> I'm standing there and I've just come out of my brand new lingerie and folded it neatly and put it under a chair. I look up and here comes the, the host, this big, belly ball sack of a man and I went oh, I have to have sex with him oh. <laughs> and I embraced my frog and, and he, what happened the best oral sex I'd ever had I had some of the best manual sex I love a good hand drive with someone who is totally unattractive and I normally would never go out with but we had a great time yep so you get past what is my type I never had a type. Oh, oh, I did. Oh, <laughs> disgusting. I always wanted to have sex outside my race. I think that's really beneficial too. Yes. Yeah, different color, different skin, different everything. Sex outside my my orientation. Okay. Yeah. Because I kind of aspired to being a lesbian, but I wasn't. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> but you know, when you have an experience with a woman and it's not romantic because it's not your ideal, or maybe sex with someone older, it's not your ideal, it's amazing how much pleasure can creep into that and how fun it can be released yes. from all these agendas and you know performance anxiety and hopes and dreams I remember the first time I had sex with uh, a black man it was mm -hmm. so exciting <laughs> but then we ended up going together for quite a while <laughs> the differences and then how everyone's the same yeah. It's like it makes us more human. Yes. I've yes. had sex with gay men, and I know you have too. <laughs> <laughs> and you learn so much. Yeah, yeah. Well, just hanging out with gay men, I learned a lot because they talk so openly about sex. Well, that's why, you know, your experience in the BDSM community and kink, I think, was so beneficial for you as a. Uh, a sexologist because you learn that you have to negotiate up front. I had never negotiated a sex. No, it just happens. You have a few drinks and you fuck. Like, that's it. You dated. And that led to what, whatever it led to. But we never thought in terms of 
what do you what would, what do you like? What would you like to do? It just like are you a top? Are you a bottom? Oh, oh well, everything. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and what's your limit, right? I don't want to do this. A limit? What What does that mean? I just it was I was so stupid about myself. And that was the 80s, so you were already, what, in your mid-40s, late 40s, when you had that experience? I was already a grown woman who knew nothing about sex. Who had written a best-selling sex book, right? About masturbation, and you knew about that, but it's... That I know. It's a journey. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think you're ever done learning about sex, and I think that's why it's so attractive to yeah, me. Yeah, I'm still learning. And what about group sex? I mean, we can't leave that out. Well, the group sex is... I mean, I, that's where I learned the most, and that's why body sex became, exists. Became, <laughs> it wouldn't became exist a group. A group, sex. It, a group, a group. We've got to get away from that. Uh. Well, you know what? Because when it's in a group, it becomes more playful and fun. Playful, if you can get to exactly. a body sex workshop, now we have almost 50 women out there doing them all over the world. It's so beneficial to its sisterhood, its nudity, it's fun, it's playful, it's orgasm, but it's self-love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're focused on yourself primarily with mm -hmm. all the other elements. And all that energy of other people. Yes, yes, it's the ideal. The ideal it is. And I guess you could throw in like, you know, sex you know, sex clubs, sex parties, but you the know, circle. When I was trying to learn about sex, when I was basically in my late 30s, early 40s, um, I, it, there was a certain amount of danger in dating. I mean, you never knew <laughs> who the guy was going to turn out to be. He could be uh, like, uh. so when I went to the first sex party, a group, I looked around and I thought, my God, there is safety in numbers. Because I was in a group and if something was really going wrong, I could holler out and I'd get help. I felt that way about sex clubs. <clears throat> Everyone's always scared of a sex club, but there are so many people there that are working there and also people attending. Yes. Then if anything happened you didn't like and went past the boundary, just you could just- Holler. <laughs> you know, <laughs> or there's only one person at their house or yeah. their apartment that's yeah. kind of creepy. <laughs> you know? Well, no, and, and you go, when I was in high school, it was getting in a car and going out into a, a wheat field and parking thousands of miles from civilization. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's horrible. Uh, but sex is, um, for me, so sacred. And I think, um, be a sex worker or hire a sex worker, I think it's very important for us in America, we have this puritanical thing that we judge sex workers and they're the healers. but. Taking money for sex or paying money for sex, I think it heals so much. I was so amazed the first time I got paid for sex. It was it was my girlfriend who was a prostitute, and she'd booked for a double, and her girlfriend backed out. And she called you. Who can I call? I yeah, called God. Dodson. I mean, so I, <laughs> how can I say no? Besides, I wanted to see what it was like. What it was like. That's it. It's like your your curiosity. Ah, uh, it was. And what was it like? No, it was great. It was I had absolutely never been paid for sex. No, because that's wrong. And all that, of you're a sudden, dirty I thought, then. my God, think of all the money I could. <laughs> 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 so, I ended up having a good time. I made a hundred dollars. I went back upstairs, and it was so nothing had changed. Nothing. Yeah. I wasn't a bad person. I wasn't a a fallen woman. I wasn't any of those nasty things. Maybe that's what some of this is about, is when we assume different roles and we have sex outside the prescribed box. We realize we're all kind of just human. We are. And we're all sexual on one degree or another. And we should all kind of be having more sex because it makes us happy. With that in mind, go have an orgasm. <laughs>